What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for yet another Tottenham update. Do remind you to download the SofaScore app. It's obviously the app that we've been using uh, for quite a while now, but it literally the best analytic stats and statistical um, knowledge in the game. So download the app. The link is in the description below. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's get into the Tottenham update, though. We're going to start off with Ryan Mason. As yesterday, we said he is the uh, front runner to take that Anderlecht job. Uh, but apparently that has all been put to bed now, as Paul O'Keefe says that interim boss David Huber has been appointed over Mason. Understand some there were some concerns over an inexperienced 33-year-old who doesn't know the league uh, was too risky for some. Tottenham and Daniel Levy did not prevent Daniel uh, Ryan Mason from leaving. Sammy Mockbell says that Mason is staying at Tottenham following talks with Anderlecht. And Alistair Gold says that Ryan Mason is now staying at Spurs after talks with Anderlecht to be their new head coach. It's understood that both Mason and Anderlecht both mutually decided the timing isn't right. Mm. Shame for him because it would have been a good opportunity. Uh, we, as we said before, a few other coaches have taken the Anderlecht job, really made a name for themselves. And, I, you know, at this stage of his career, clearly he was interested in, in going into that top position now. Though I, I don't think he would have taken those talks with Anderlecht in the first place if he really didn't want the job or wasn't interested in taking that next step. So for him, it's probably a shame that Anderlecht, you know, looked at all the whole situation and said, actually, we've probably got too many concerns. Um, considering they've taken um, young, you know, I think it was company's first managerial job, wasn't it, when he went there. So, you know, he's they've taken managers of not much experience before. So, look, it means he stays at Spurs. Clearly, if um, if... if clubs are looking at him for that top job they clearly see the talent there and they clearly think they've got something about him so I think we do have a talented coach there so it's not a bad thing he's staying at Tottenham for us but for him it's a shame he doesn't get that job I'll be interesting to see you know down the line now he is now it's pretty much known he's looking for that top job whether more opportunities come his way and maybe a championship club or a club in, in the football league maybe they come his way and and um you know a call upon him so I think probably sooner rather than later we'll start getting more opportunities yeah I hope so I thought it was a really good opportunity and a really good fit for him to go to Anderlecht obviously they've, they've decided against it and they've gone with the interim manager who's also a young coach in his own right at 36 years of age David Huber so we'll see how he gets on there but um, yeah I thought it would have been a really good opportunity for him to go there and see what he's about good place to start your managerial career and apparently Paul O'Keefe said that he was on the um, recommendation of Jan Vertonghen so it would have been an interesting dynamic to see Jan Vertonghen playing under Ryan Mason not strong enough apparently recommendation yeah, I guess so <laughs> but um, yeah hopefully he'll get some more opportunities coming his way in the future and he, it was also said that if Ryan Mason was to leave Spurs then they wouldn't have even uh, gone to look for a replacement for him so maybe that goes to show where um, he's at but I do think that I do think that Ryan Mason will get a managerial job at some mm. point soon um, next up, we're going to be talking about Cuti Romero as as uh, TNT Sport Argentina claimed yesterday that he's got a 65 million release clause. Me and Sim were talking about this in the studio. It was like, there's no way he has a 65 million release clause. And Fabrizio Romano pretty much confirmed that an hour or so later, says there is no release clause in the Cuti Romero's contract, despite rumours in the Argentinian press. Tottenham deemed him untouchable amidst approaches from top clubs last summer. So pretty much a non-story that would bring you here. Yeah, I mean, 65 million euros that TNT were reporting which would have been only about a 10, 10 to 15 million um, profit on what we've paid for him um, when we originally signed him so I think that release clause would be way too low um, and wouldn't make wouldn't make sense to, for Spurs to agree to that especially now obviously he hasn't agreed a contract since he's come to us has he I don't think he's had a new contract no. so I can't see that being the case at all I, I, there's no reason why it would be so low especially given how good he's been at international level well, I guess you, you could say when we signed him I don't think he was a regular for Argentina at that point or at least he wasn't um, hadn't won all the trophies at that point and then when we signed him then he became like Argentina's saviour so maybe you know at that point it would have been that ridiculous to put in a release clause just after we signed him because his profile has obviously grown a lot since he signed him it's not the us. way we do business though yeah that's well, that's that's the one that made me really think Tottenham really don't do release clauses do they when does Daniel Levy ever put a release clause or agree to a release clause in a contract we do gentlemen's agreements exactly <laughs> and if you can't agree to that then sling your hook we don't do we don't have it right in writing uh, that's how we do things so 
Yeah, and it's going to take a lot more than 65 million to get him out of Tottenham, I would think. Mm. Yeah, a lot more. Apparently, they wanted north of 150 million last summer. That's now what is our world record for a centre back, probably. It would be, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, next up, we're going to talk about two potential incomings to Tottenham. The Bleacher Report are reporting that Tottenham are keeping close tabs on the progress of Leicester City defender Caleb Okoli, uh, who's actually just signed for Leicester this summer. He's only played five games for them uh, this season on the back of a uh, successful loan yeah, spell. We've seen enough, is that what you're saying? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for Rizzoni, um in Serie A last season. he was They did sign him off Atalanta, but he's had three loan spells, two in Serie B last year in Serie A, uh, playing 34 games in the season for Frozioni and now he's um, started five games for Leicester mm. this season I don't know much about him so I can't really tell you too yeah much. I mean I've seen him play a couple of times not that, not to say that I've like paid special attention to him because I'm obviously not aware of Tottenham's interest but he definitely seems like a phys very physical centre-back quite pacey as well but obviously he's only played a few games it's hard to judge he's quite new to the Premier League but he does seem to be adjusting fairly well he's didn't start, I think, the first couple of games and he's come into the team and hasn't lost his place. I think they have improved probably Leicester since he's been in the team. But, yeah, I can't say for sure whether, like, I've, I can't say for sure that I've watched him and thought, this is the guy for us. Not not yet, anyway. Mm. But it's interesting that he's fairly, what, he's 22, 23? Playing 23, regularly, yeah. Playing regularly in Premier League. So, um, for a team down the bottom. So, if you can impress for that in that kind of situation, then you've definitely got something about you. And yeah, I guess the links as well, like his agency is uh, CAA based, who obviously have oh, a very close well, ties with Tottenham. So, maybe that's why those rumours are coming we, about. We link with everyone who's with CAA based. Yeah, literally. Um, but again, like, did the rumours for a centre back make sense with the likes of Vuskovic coming in next season? We got Dragshi, we got Romero, we got Van de Ven, and we got Vuskovic and Ashley Phillips, mm -hmm. um, who have got obviously they Spurs think they've got massive futures at Spurs. So, does it make sense to bring in a centre back? Obviously, it depends on if we're going to lose Romero or not. But um, I also think that Andrew was pretty clear in his press conference that we didn't dip into the market for an extra centre back this summer because of the ones we've got coming through. So, unless there is genuine like fear that Romero is leaving then probably not mm, yeah I would say so next up is an interesting one from Graham Bailey he says that Tottenham Man City and Aston Villa have both been watching Pavel Sulk this season 23 year old Sulk is emerging as one of the most sought after talents in Europe right now playing for Victoria Plzen uh, after la uh, last season Sulk managed an incredible 18 goals in 29 games playing from midfield uh, the form that has continued into this term as well. Salk has already notched up five goals uh, to his name domestically and has transferred that form internationally too. The milk builder has now has six caps for Czechs and scored two goals against Ukraine in the Nations League back in September. Some of Europe's top clubs are paying close attention and also top Premier League clubs, including Manchester City, Aston Villa and Tottenham. Mm. I don't know much about him. I don't. Was he playing for the Euros for them? I don't, don't remember him in the Euros. I don't think he was in the Euro squad. Were they in the Euros actually? Yeah, they were. The Czechs were there. Were they? I think so. I think the Czech. Yeah, because I remember like Suchek was playing in the mm. Euros. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I think they. I think they were there, but I don't remember him specifically. What I do know is that he's quite like a, a pacey, like attacking midfielder. Can play in. He usually plays in like the number ten kind of position. Um, I can't say that he would like be good competition for Madison and Decky in that unburg. He was in the Euros. He was in the Euros. Did he play? He only played one game. Mm. But it looks like he had a really breakout season this season. So it looks like he's this is a player who's really starting to come into his own at the moment. He's got 18 goals. Um, he's got a lot of goals already this season. So one to keep an eye on. But he obviously comes in 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 competition for Decky and Madders in, in, in that position. Obviously, we've got Bergval there as well, Saar in, that, in those positions. So whether he's an upgrade on those players, we'll have to wait and see. But clearly, he's got an eye for a goal. And I think Ange likes his midfielders in that position to have that kind of goal output, which would be very valuable. And he's quite pacey as well, which definitely helps um, in how we play in, in, the, in that position. So, I mean, I, I don't think it, I can't, not, again, I'm not sitting here saying this is a great signing, but he's a, definitely an interesting player. Yeah, I th actually think he might have made his debut for Czech in the Euros. Played the first game against Portugal, uh, played 79 minutes and then didn't see another minute in the tournament where they obviously went out in the group stages. That, um, But he has started to maybe be a regular after the Euros. Mm, not surprised. 
Um, let's talk about this Pedro Porro interview. A lot has been made out of it on social media uh, regarding his comments uh, regarding Real Madrid. An overreaction on social media, surely not. Nah, never. never. But uh, I've got a few of the quotes to read out to you um, as the interview with Relevo, Revelo. And the first one, uh, they asked him, are you at your best now? And he, he, would, he said, I would say yes, since I was at Sporting, I'm uh, feeling much better and that is important. And I feel like he is kind of, when you're looking at his form, he does seem to be getting more better and better and more comfortable and more comfortable, doesn't he? More consistent as well. Yeah. And we always said on the ball he's been brilliant, but defensively, obviously, I don't think he's the best defensive fullback in the Premier League or anything, but he's really solid enough that it's not he's not a liability anymore, which is really important. And then they asked him, what do you think you have improved in the most? And he says, defensively, I've put a lot of emphasis on that and I've had to defend a lot. The Premier League is a very one-on-one -on -one, and I've worked well on that. The coach, uh, we have worked especially on that. And thanks to the work, I've improved. So mm -hmm. he's saying Ange has uh, worked specifically on him with defensive work. Well, it makes sense because he doesn't really need any improvement on the, in, on the ball because he's so good. Like we, we know his long range passing, he put it on a sixpence, he's got unbelievable delivery, he's got a good shot as well. Like that's not where he needed improvement. So I'm glad that they focused on that. And that's why he's become a much better all round fullback. Yeah, and his his defensive play does go a bit under the radar, doesn't it? I do think he's been improving on it. If you cast your mind back to his debut against Leicester, how he got opened up alive that day. Uh, but also, like the narrative is that Ange doesn't work on defensive stuff and uh, he's not interested in that whatsoever. And he's clearly stating here that they've worked together on it. I'm sure individually they do. I'm sure they do as a team. But I think in, that's the thing. When it's individually, I don't think the defenders are bad defenders. But when as a collective... That's where there's issues, mm. I think, big issues. Yeah. Uh, next up, they asked him, for such a young player, you've moved around a lot. You've now established yourself at Tottenham and you're doing great things. Do you, need, uh, do you think you needed, above all, stability for several years at a club? So many comings and goings. And he says, yes, I spent a lot of years at Girona and then I quickly went to Valladolid to play another season until I left for Portugal, where I stayed two and a half years. Now at Tottenham, I've settled and that is good. I've always been... Um, on one side or the other. It's part of football and you have to be prepared at all times at what comes your way. Now I'm more focused and comfortable. And I can see that you can see like within his attitude, with his camaraderie, with his teammates, that he is very settled at Tottenham. Definitely. And he's, I think you can see he's part of the furniture in terms of how he is with the squad and how he's definitely a very popular member of the team. And um, yeah, I think definitely he's, he looks like he's at home at Tottenham for sure. Next one is a well. If you continue like this, I have the feeling that you'll continue to move around even though you have a contract in London until 2028. Do you feel when clubs like Real Madrid, what do you feel when clubs like Real Madrid are interested in you? And he says, it fills you with excitement, doesn't it? You have to focus on your work, but the fact that Real Madrid are interested in you is because you are doing good things. Um, that's how I think about it on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, if that moment ha um, has to come, it will come. But if it doesn't, well, I'll just keep working as I have been doing. Um, do you feel like that's kind of twerking for Real Madrid or you just feel like that's what any player is going to play in that situation when a, a reporter brings up to you that Real Madrid are interested in you? At the end of the day, he's Spanish. You know, he's he's probably seen, probably grown up. I don't know if he was a Madrid fan or whatever growing up, but obviously... Didn't he come, did he come from Madrid at some point? No, that was Regulon. No, that yeah. was someone else. He... Um, so he's always been, obviously, he's, as I say, he's Spanish, probably grew up looking at Real Madrid as obviously the biggest club in the world. And we know how amazing uh, Real Madrid are and how much Spanish players want to play for them. It's no, no surprise. And this isn't as much as he's obviously at home at Tottenham and been brilliant for us and probably loves it here. here. Obviously, it's, if a player like him will obviously be his dream to play for a, for a club like Real Madrid. So it doesn't surprise me at all. Again, a Real Madrid have to come in for him. They have to, uh, they, I don't think there's any been serious... Uh, rumours about him them coming in from anything like that as much as Carvajal's ageing so naturally there is going to be a spot there there's rumours of Trent there's rumours of other players as well I haven't seen Porro's name being brought up too many times as of yet but they might they might see it as an opportunity but I guess how how else is he supposed to answer it if, if obviously Real Madrid are a massive club and there is a step up it's one of the clubs which is a step up from Tottenham so I'm, I understand it obviously from a Tottenham fans perspective they don't like to hear it that he's excited about the prospect of leaving you and going to a club like Real Madrid but there's no indication that you know 
that's a possibility right now or that that's something he's pushing for. Mm. You know, it's just is what it is. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing to push for at the moment. But when you look at, like you say, the aging Danny carver Howe, and you're saying that Podro could be the heir to that throne for the national team, mm -hmm. um, it kind of could make sense for, for Real Madrid to push the boat out and, and go get him, you know, a Spanish international at the age he's at, the level that he's performing at. I mean, it does, obviously there's no real links there, but it does kind of make sense. Definitely, but I'm actually, the, the way I think of him and people like Romero who've been, you know, talking or not talking but linked with moves away and stuff like that, I'm very much more comfortable with Tottenham's contingency plans at the moment and, and their ability to recruit for what they need in certain positions. And I'm really, of the who we've signed so far, they've really, like, been able to, uh, like, um, do the job profile wise for the position they've been asked to play and and the job they've been asked to do so if we were to sell Poro if that was to happen or Romero or whoever I'm much more confident now than I would have been a couple of years ago of replacing them I mm. think it's the Vanderson eh huh the Vanderson eh Vanderson maybe that's why we've been heavily linked with him like there's all these like whoever it is I think the, we're in a much better way recruitment wise in terms of getting the right player rather than just getting some someone in that position and i think uh, at the moment i'm um, like if if the players want to leave then that's what it is you see even top clubs like man city if a player wants to leave they let them go they don't hang hang around and they're confident they can replace them i think we should be the same mm. uh, and last but not least he says inevitably you'll be associated your career with the likes of danny carver how uh, the door start the door to a starting position has opened for you in the national team and in Madrid as with Lucas Danny is getting older and don't have much time left in the whites do you see yourself ready to make the leap in the future at some, such a young age and he says yes obviously yes because as I told you I try to work and give my best every day if I get the chance to make that leap tomorrow I'll be prepared for that very reason I'll be very much more experienced if you have told me this years ago I would have told you that I wasn't because I'm being honest. Let's see what happens. So he thinks he's ready uh, to make that step up. To the Spanish team? Um, well, yeah, to the Spanish team. But also, I think he's talking about the Real Madrid team as well, because they didn't just ask him, about, ask him about the national team. They talk, they asked him about Madrid too. So how is the question phrased? Uh, it says, inevitably, you'll be associated with your career with that of Carver Howe. The door to a starting position has opened for you in the national team and in Madrid. And in Madrid, as with Lucas. Well, uh, maybe you could definitely read into that, but um, I think he's prop. I'm like to think he's probably focused on the national team. But look, I think he is getting ready to, to make a step up to a club like Madrid. I think he's definitely capable of it because of how good he is. So, like the way they phrased it, is he going to say yes, the national team, but not Madrid? He's not going to separate it, is he? In his answer, he's probably going to say, "Yeah, I'm ready to make a step up." But they did initially talk about the national team, so maybe that was in his mind, or maybe he is thinking about both. But either way, he is probably ready to make that step into the into that position. Mm. I would say. Yeah, I mean, as much as I said before, I feel like Porro is a kind of natural replacement for Danny Carvajal because of the, the national ties and, and how well he's doing. Trent, I mean, Jude Bellingham's doing some work on Trent uh, Alexander-Arnold at the moment, isn't mm -hmm. he? And he's got his contract out at the end of the season. Cheaper option, potentially. Than Cheaper paying, and, paying you know, whatever it will cost potentially better it. option as well with Trent Alexander-Arnold. So can you see Trent actually going to Real Madrid at the end of the season? I mean, he hasn't really batted away suggestions, has he? Mm. He's, he's been very coy about it. So something clearly is going on. And obviously, if you're Madrid, you probably go for Trent, obviously, rather than Porro. As much as I love Porro, Trent is just... They love an English superstar around Madrid. Trent is Trent. He's an unbelievable generational talent. As much as I think Porro is an unbelievable fullback, he's just not Trent. Trent is just a bit of a level above. But you could argue Porro maybe is a better all-round fullback, but I think Trent is also improving defensively. And also, they're similar ages. So, And obviously, if we saw what they did with Mbappe. They got him on a free. And... Um, then they, you know, that, that's, what, that's what they're trying to do. And they said that, um, Frontier Perez said that very clearly. They don't want to be paying massive transfer fees anymore. They want to be doing things in a different way. So Trent would fit that bill. And if Liverpool this season again, aren't, if they're not in a title race and they're not winning big trophies, maybe he'll think, look, if Madrid are there, that, that, I mean, he's been, obviously he's been around now for Liverpool for a while. He's won everything with them. Might, might be a time for a new challenge. Yeah, I mean, he's been he's been starting well, been playing football there since 2016, which is a long time. I mean, he's given a lot. I mean, this isn't. But uh, he is a scouse lad. 
He is a scouse lad, but I can see the move happening this mm. summer for Trent. And if that does happen, that does just, you know, close the door, yeah. close the door for Pedro completely. Mm. So we'll see what happens. But look, you don't like to see a player who you love and adore talking about leaving and, and talking about making a step up. But I do kind of understand it uh, to a certain extent from Pedro Porro being Spanish and being a club that he's looked up to probably his whole life. And when these kind of talks come about, you're naturally going to get excited. So I don't like it, though, when he goes away to the national team, they start asking him these questions. Mm -hmm. But I guess it's not like he's just bringing it up on his own kind of accord. He's being asked these questions. He's got to answer mm. them. That's it. So that is your Tottenham update for today. Let me know in the comments section below. Do you think Pedro Porro is twerking for Madrid? Let us know in the comments section below. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come on, you Spurs.